Both the Match Group's Tinder as well as Snapchat have prioritized Android development long after both companies went public. For Tech Republic and ZDNet in New York, my name is Dan Patterson with Tech Republic Editorial Director and ZDNet Editor-in-Chief Larry Dignan and Tech Republic Managing Editor Bill Detweiler. Bill, why are these companies prioritizing Android development now? Well, I mean, you basically can't ignore such a large segment of the market. I mean, it, it's really not uh, smart if Android has, say, 85% of the consumer uh, mobile market, especially in growing parts of the world. You know, iOS may dominate in North America and, and in uh, Europe, but in most of the rest of the world, Android is predominant. So, you know, it's just not smart business to ignore such a large portion of uh, your addressable audience. So Larry, uh, in their earnings call recently, Snapchat CEO uh, said that Android development was a big priority for them. They're also redesigning the user interface to make the application more usable. This is a bit of a head scratcher. Yeah, it was, it was weird. It was weird to hear it like, you know, and see it in text and hear it out loud. Um, but what's interesting, there are a few moving parts here that are interesting. I mean, one, when Snap was hatched, all of its engagement was on iOS, right? So that's where all the moving parts, that's where the user base was, and that's what they went for. And it worked out great as a private company. What was interesting, though, is that, you know, they kind of let their Android development slip, which I totally understand, right? Because anyone who's in the app business in any way knows that Android's a pain in the butt right? You got all these variants out there. You got all the splintering off of different things. You got multiple devices to test on, you know, where Apple's got iOS and it's basically got, you know, one or two phones. Life's good. Um, so from a cost perspective and a development perspective, it totally makes sense to focus on iOS. The problem is, like Bill said, all the growth overseas is Android. So Snapchat's kind of hit this level where it needs to grow more um, and what they're doing is they're basically, you know, they launched a Q&A lab. They're testing all these different devices and different variants of Android, which I think they said on their conference calls, like 60,000 different variants, which is kind of nutty in itself, but um, not surprising. And so basically they're trying to get things like, you know, camera performance to improve because it's a lot slower than it is on iOS. Uh, the other thing they're trying to do is eliminate crashes. And it just struck me as odd you know, from, from a business perspective, it makes no sense at all. But from a, from a developer perspective and focusing your resources on engineering, it doesn't look so dumb. And I thought this was kind of a weird thing and, you know, did some posts on it and whatnot. And then, you know, and then Match.com's Tinder, uh, you know, Match.com reported earnings and, you know, they're just killing it and Tinder's a growth engine. And then once you start looking into their history, about a year ago, they went under this great, you know, they basically had to rewrite all their code. And they also started focusing on Android, much in the same way where Snap is today. Um, and they lowered crash rates a bunch and, you know, improved performance. And shockingly, you know, usage went up on Android. Um, so it's just interesting as these companies scale, you bet on that known horse, which is iOS, but if you want any kind of global reach and expansion, you got to go where the market share is. So it's, it's a conundrum I think every company is going to have to juggle. Could Tinder and Snap's uh, shift to Android be tied together or are these independent moves? Uh, they are somewhat tied together in that Tinder was a startup that was bought by Match. And what Match did was basically, you know, gave them more organization, more planning, more roadmap sort of things like that, where from your startup, you're just running fast, right? So, so that look, like from a business perspective, Match brought processes into it and said, all right, guys, we've got to kind of shore up this Android thing. Or Snaps, just kind of running, 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 run by the same guy. And now it's public. And now they, you know, they say, I mean, their future growth depends on Android, which, you know, is a bit of a head scratcher considering the company's been around for a while. And I don't think you can really underestimate what Larry is saying there. You know, the management culture, uh, the beginnings of a company can often sort of, you know, play into, you know, the strategy going forward. And, you know, Snap has now realized, hey, look, you know, we've got to move beyond just a smart engineering decision or a smart decision that allows us 
to focus on you know, bringing a product to market quickly and really focusing on a sort of that core audience. And now because we're public, we've got to grow. So same question for you both, but I, I imagine there are quite a few lessons in here for other startup founders. Uh, Larry, is this a lesson for uh, uh, startup founders in other companies in terms of how to prioritize development? I, I think it goes beyond it goes beyond startups. I mean, I, I think this is a core this is a core issue that you have to think about for anyone developing mobile apps, big company, small company, everything in between. Um, because I think the natural pull is to develop on iOS. And if you're B2B and you, that's your target audience, iOS probably makes more sense because the, the market shares are pretty much flipped. Consum and consumer market share, Android dominates. And the enterprise market share, iOS dominates. So each decision is going to be different. But I mean, I think you look at, you know, you're all juggling resources, costs, and market opportunity. And that kind of varies by everywhere. But if you're focused on cost in the bottom line, you're probably more likely to, you know, kind of put Android off to the side because it is a pain, but it's a pain you can't ignore. Um, so I think that's the sort of, you know, I think you're balancing costs. The other takeaway is you got to balance long term versus short term. Um, the other, the other takeaway here is you got to balance global opportunities with, you know, with local or wherever local may be. But, you know, if you're, if you're trying to reach the market in India or China or someplace, you're going to need Android. Um, so that's sort of the, you know, it's, it's that quintessential business problem, right? It's like, it's like cost and returns and opportunities. And, you know, it's, you just got to juggle that around. And Bill, what about the enterprise? Are there lessons here from watching how startups have moved? Oh, definitely. I mean, to use an unfortunately often overused uh, analogy, you know, you, you always want to go to where the audience is, right? You always want to skate to where the puck is going to be. So I think whether you're, you know, you always have to be able to adapt and you always have to know your audience, right? So wherever your customers are, you can go there and that's fine. But over time, you really start needing, you really start um, to need to look at where your audience is going to be and where you uh, can grow into. And if that means you have to uh, abandon or at least modify or um, expand your engineering efforts or your product offerings, whatever that is, um, then, then you need to do that. Or, you know, you're going to be overtaken by the very next startup that comes out. All right, you can read Larry Dignan's entire story called Snapchat Gets Android Developer Religion Better Late Than Never by visiting ZDNet. And while you're there, make sure you subscribe to ZDNet's Next Big Thing newsletter. For Larry Dignan and Bill Detweiler in New York, I'm Dan Patterson.